Um, okay, so welcome back to the AI for Genomics and Health seminar series. Uh, the food is not here yet, so I think we should get started and we will interrupt for about uh, two minutes or so, so that everybody can get some food when the pizza arrives, which might be another five or ten minutes. Um, so it's my great pleasure to introduce today Asa al -Thagavi. and Asa will talk about visualization and simulation of genomes for premarital testing and will introduce her VSIM tool for that. Uh, good afternoon and thank you all for being here today. I'm delighted to be here to share with you our work, uh, Visualization and Simulation of Genome for Premarital Testing. My talk is divided into the following main sections. I will start with the brief introductions and fundamental related biological concepts followed by the motivation of the work and definition of the problem. After that, I will explain the method that we are followed and uh, I will review the implementation part. And finally, I'm going to show you some results and discuss one case study. And I will be glad to answer any questions that you may have at the end. So as all you know, that our body is made of a huge collection of cells that consist of a set of chromosomes, 23 pairs of chromosomes that contain our DNA. And our DNA carries a set of genes that provide instructions or detailed code for a specific trait that you have. One of the most important facts about our DNA that all we know that it's being inherited or passed from parents to their offspring. And this genetic inheritance due to the genetic material that must be replicated and passed from parent to their offspring cell in each cell division during a process called meiosis. Meiosis is a form of cell division that produces gametes, and as by you people know, there are many stages occur during this process. However, here I'm focusing only in one concept typically occur during this process now as a recombination. What is a recombination? Recombination is a process by which a piece of DNA are broken and recombined to produce a new combination of allele, which contributes to the genetic diversity. And as you can see in the figure, that the recombinations can be happen in, in each and in, in any positions within the chromosome, but the recombinations between gene A and B are more frequent to be happen compared to the recombinations between gene P and C. And I think it's obvious why is that. Why is that? Because gene A and B are farther apart, a crossover therefore is more likely to happen between them, which is an opposite of what we call genetic linkage or linked gene, uh, for example, P and C, where two genes are close to each other, they are more likely to be transmitted together to the same gamete. They will not be separated. And there is one important concept related to this uh, concept of linkage, uh, of linkage gene, which is known as a linkage disequilibrium. What does it mean by linkage disequilibrium? Linkage disequilibrium is measure whether one allele at one locus is associated or correlated with the second allele at another locus. More simply, whether one allele at one dose high tend to be found more frequently with the second allele at a second dose high. And these terms you usually use to, with the chance of co-inheritance of allele at different uh, locations. So as I introduced that our body consists of a huge amount of uh, huge collections of cells and deciphering these huge amount of information would be a tremendous task but could offer unprecedented insight into the human body in terms of their health, associated diseases, and so on. And predicting the possible disease effect associated with the individual by using whole genome sequencing is significantly emerging a challenge and important for the genetic counseling and uh, preventing uh, health uh, disease problem, uh, health, the genetic disease problem. So our motivations for this project is summarized within four points. First, almost any human disorder have a genetic component on it. It may vary from 100% for the monogenic diseases to much smaller percentage for the most, much complex one. And understanding of how variants related to the disease risk is very important as it helps with the better diagnosis of the disease and prognosis of the disease development or even development of the new drugs. Second, consanguinity marriage is very common in some region due to the social uh, effect factor, including religions and ethnicity. And recent studies shows that the prevalence of consanguinity marriage is varying from 40% to 68% in the Middle East country. 
and it is estimated to be 58 in Saudi Arabia and 15 in Oman and more than 40 in the rest of, this, of, in the, rest of the countries. And as a result of that, it has a significantly higher risk in, in result on the children with the major congenital diseases. Uh, and this, of course, will, great, will cause a great suffering for the next generation of the children. And as a response of this high rate of consanguinity marriage, the government's health introduced a mandatory genetic testing for couples before getting married to identify the individual who are carrier of autosomal recessive disorder or to identify the individual who have the, pre, uh, the disease pre, predisposition to produce a disease to, the, to their offspring. But, uh, and while this such program is very uh, important and address important health problems, it's, they are limited to a few diseases. And I should say that not all the consanguinity marriage will lead to the disease, but in very high rate it will cause uh, either uh, known or unknown genetic diseases. And the last thing, there is a lack of simulations of populations and comorbidities in which there are more than one diseases associated with the person. So based on these facts, the interpretations of human genome sequencing is increasingly being helpful to identify the causal mutations of the disease in the individual. And also for coupling, considering marriage, they are want to know in an early, in an early stage what are the different diseases that might associate it with their children. And uh, visualization is the one of the means to interpret the whole genome sequencing data and play a crucial role in data analysis. From here, we tend to develop our tool, which is we name it PSIM. Uh, PSIM is just a method for interpretations and visualization of personal genomic data. It's identify, it's identify and visualize the candidate diseases variant associated with the Mendelian disease and the disease associated with the, uh, that convey risk of uh, complex diseases and uh, the diseases that, uh, the variant that associated with the digenic disease <coughs> and also the variants that may affect the drug response. Uh, moreover, it also uh, predicts the, uh, the pathogenic variants in which the, the variants that most likely will be the causes of the disease. And uh, also we uh, approach, we did a simulation approach in which we, simulation, we simulate the populations of offspring and uh, then we analyze the disease that might associate it with it based on the genetic factor of their parent and then we visualize uh, the result. Shall I stop here because the beast died arrived? Let's have, a, let's have a two minute break before people start running off. Okay, just to focus because the next yes. is the method. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because they will just admit that I want to, I'll be able yeah. to concentrate on that. I'll take ten, ten, five because minutes. We'll just repeat this one slide. Okay. And just the problem, okay. Yeah. The okay. Yeah, because this is what we're going to do. Okay, okay. Just summarize. Yes. Yes. Already we've had that. Sure. We'll continue in two minutes. Did you stop the recording? <laughs> What's the way to say? No, no, what's the presentation in German? Why is that? Hello, it's Bokhart. Ah, it's Bokhart. Hagmat or the... No, it's not Hagmat. 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 No, it's not signals boring الله يسعدك خلاص هذا ريال براكتس ايوه ان شاء الله الاسئله انا خايفه لما تروحوا كلكم نسكر الباب علي لوحدي انا لا اخاف غير ما تاكلوا غير ما تاخذوا اكل ها
هلا صراحه عندهم دوامات وكذا وخفت فتره اشيل هم مهم لا اشيل هم بس ممكن اشيل همهم اجيبهم وكذا ابغى اركز في شغل صراحه انا ماني فاضي صراحه انت وقتايا انت علي انت اهلي انت اهلي وقتايا بي هلا والثقه في في الاداء عجبتني كده لما تكون تاخد بقابلك عشان ممتازه ربنا يحميك ربنا يحميك الله يسعدك شكرا ان شاء الله كمل interruption but at least now uh, we do have some food uh, please let's continue with Asa's presentation okay. so I uh, just uh, repetitions for the um, definition, definition of the problem uh, PSM is a software that provide an interpretations and visualization of the human genome and identify the candidate diseases variant associated with the Mendelian diseases and the variant that, that convey risk with the complex disease and the variant that may affect on the drug response and also the variants that have effect in oligogenic and diagenic diseases. And we further implement a simulation approach in which we simulate the population of, of spring that are arising from uh, two individuals that who are sequence data is available and then we, uh, we will analyze their uh, diseases. And one important concept that we, our, um, our simulation approach that account, uh, are able to account for the non-uniform distributions of the recombinations and as a result it's perceived the linkage equilibrium and the resulting comorbidities. So let's go deeper and understand how uh, and demonstrate how we did that. First, we're collecting our uh, PCF file or our data from 1,000 genome projects that contain almost 1,000 1, individual with, three, uh, with 37 million variants and uh, all these variants are in PCF file format it's just a generic file format that consists of a DNA uh, variations with the rich annotation and for this individual they are combined all, all of them uh, within separate uh, chromosome file so we use uh, Java R kit which is a Java utilities tool for bioinformatics and PCF tool just to separate these PCF files into uh, separate PCF file per each individual and also we collect data from different data databases starting from the GWAS that contains 68 uh, SNMs for this database we get all the diseases that all the complex diseases and their associated uh, information and also we use the phar pharmacogenomic database for all the variants that convey risk with the drug response and also we use the diagenic and oligogenic uh, diagenic diseases database and this, this database consists of diseases that are happened with the combinations of more than one gene. For this, we have 20, 20, 200 diagenic combination with 400 uh, variants, and that contributes with 44 di diagenic diseases. And finally, we also use ClinVar, which is con contain the relationship between uh, diseases and uh, symptoms. Uh, for this, we uh, get all the Mendelian disease with the help from OMM uh, database that uh, give us information about a different kind of uh, mode of inheritance. Also, we predict, as I said, we predict the pathogenic variant. For that, we use the Mendelian clinically applicable pathogenicity score. Uh, for this, it is identified 
the variants that are more likely to be causes, causes of the disease, and also these variants are not mentioned in any of the previous databases. And this take all the uh, variants, uh, loop through all the variants and score of them and produce a list of variants that are possibly pathogenic variants. And why I choose this tool? Because as, I, as, as it is reported, it is have a very high true positive rate compared to other pathogenetic score. And it is outward from all the existing pathogenetic score like polyphenset, uh, mutation tester. And uh, it differs from this uh, existing score that it is uses uh, gradient boosting tree classifier. And uh, also it uses uh, 318 feature as inputs ranging from pre-existing pathogenetic score and also custom uh, amino acid level features. So collecting all, all our data together, our method workflow is goes as follows. We have the PCF file for individual. Then with the use of our database information and our developed uh, algorithm, we annotate, uh, we identify all the variants in this individual with separate diseases. After that, we generate <coughs> a report that contains all the information of this uh, individual, and finally, we, visual we visualize the results. And the other scenario is that we have uh, a vari we have <coughs> we have a VCF file for both individual uh, represent parents, uh, represent father and mother. Uh, and then we simulate a population of the children and uh, we are taking into account the non-random uh, associations and the non-random recombinations events. And after that, we're developing our algorithms and with the help of databases uh, to analyze the different uh, diseases associated with the children. And since it is not one file, we can directly generate a report. No, we need to perform summary statistics about different kinds of diseases associated with the children and finally generate one report and visualize the results. Let's go deeper and understand each scenario separately. For the first scenario, we have the genotypic data of the individual. After that, our algorithm is goes as follow. With the help, we develop the script with the help of bit tools intersect. We try to find the overlap genomics feature between our input file and different information in this database. So in case for Klimbar, we use all the data in Klimpar and also the human uh, phenotypes and ontologies uh, to find all the uh, subclasses that define the diseases that are uh, recessive and all the diseases are, that are dominant. And after that, we identify all the diseases with different mode of inheritance, either carrier or, dom or dominant, based on the MMID. And the output of this method will be a list of variants uh, a list of variants that may cause uh, one of the Mendelian diseases. And the second uh, case, we use the GWAS database with the help of DBSNP uh, DBSNP to find the uh, genomic coordinates that, uh, help, uh, that help us with better, with better finding the overlap between our input and the GWAS uh, information. And the output of this will be uh, a list of variants that convey risk of complex diseases. And for diagenic, for the diagenic diseases, we have, uh, we have a separate databases that for diagenic combination, contains all the genes that are responsible for one, uh, for one disease. So I give all these genes a, a unique ID. And, with, and then we find the uh, overlap, overlap uh, genomic section, section, uh, sections with the, our input file. And finally, the output will be uh, a list of variants that convey risk of diagenic disease. And for, for the pharmacogenomic database, the same as, I, th I think the same as uh, GWAS, we, they, are, they have missing parts uh, for finding the intersection. So I use the RS, uh, RSIDs with the help of DBSNP to identify the missing information. And then I take the overlap and find all the variants that may convey risk of the drug response. This is in the terms of the database that contain the well-known uh, diseases variant associated with the individual. Separate from that, I take the, the, the input file and apply uh, MCAB score that predicts different pathogenic uh, variants. And we filter out all, uh, actually this tool gives each variant score. And as, uh, as recommended by the author to filter out all the variants that are low, larger than 0.25, as considered as pathogenic variants. And the output of this will be the list of variants that are pathogenic or clinically relevant. 
And the output of this old algorithm is the combined of these all informations with the annotated PCF file with all of the informations, just to use it for later, later use for uh, visualization. And for the second scenario, the simulations, I just want to emphasize that we, our sim sim simulator implemented based on the real-time genomics, and, but the problem with RTG simulations tool are they are random and do not consider the recombination hotspots. I mean, they are not considering the varying decom recombination rates that should be happen uh, to simulate the population of children. So we expanded the RTG to accurately consider the genome-wide recombination rate, and the good news is that we are in contact with the developer of this tool, and they are uh, happy to um, include our changes within their tool. So uh, before I explain how we did that, I, I need just to mention some statistics regarding the recombination. Uh, two genes on the chromosomes that have one percentage chance of crossover peer generations, peer generations, uh, are defined to be a distance of centimorgan. And the average rate of the recombinations in the, within the population is one centimorgan per one, mega, one megabase. And some locations along the chromosomes are hot spot, uh, th th that means they are more likely the crossover to happen in them. And also the human female have 50% higher rate of recombinations compared to male. And as a consequence of that, this is a known fact in biology, so we need to consider all these informations in our simulator. So how we did that? We used the recombination rate maps, actually uh, from one of the recent and interesting uh, work uh, published in Nature. They, are, uh, they have recombinations event for both sex, collected from six recent human pedigrees, uh, pedigrees file, and they have a total of uh, almost 1,000 informative, 1,000, uh, one, oh, yes, 1,000 uh, informative myoses. And also, they combine the data sets with, that are consisting of uh, two, that consisting of two uh, million uh, female meiosis process uh, and uh, w almost one million for male recombination. So we get all these, all these information. We have 20, 23, uh, chromosomes for uh, female and for male. Uh, we have a list of positions and the, the, the distance in centimorgan. But the problem is that the centimorgan does not correspond exactly to the probability of the genetic recombination. We are care here about the probability of the genetic recombination to be happen. So for that, we assuming the Hadhen map function in which the number of crossover is distributed according to Poisson distribution. And, uh, and I should say <coughs> there is little math here. Uh, however, uh, just uh, the bottom line is that we just apply this function, and we have uh, replaced this distance here with all the centi all the centimorgan uh, position that we have. So at the end, we have uh, a list of uh, all the recombinations probability for all the chromosomes for both sex. Then our algorithms goes as follows. We have the inputs, two inputs, uh, two, uh, we have two file, uh, a PCF file, represent mother and father. Then we, com we calculate the recombination probability, as I explained uh, previously. After that, we normalize, normalize the data and calculate the CDF function. And uh, we find, uh, for after that, we find the mother and father crossover position chosen randomly according to the CDF. And then we loop through our PCF file and finding to and perform crossover in one of these positions that we already found here. So we loop through all, uh, for example, chromosome one for the female, female, we loop through all these positions and we see if one of these positions occur, uh, is one uh, matches with the one that we found in the crossover, uh, in the crossover locations or not. If yes, then we perform a crossover and generate a children. If no, uh, no sorry, we perform a crossover and loop through all the PCA file until the end. After the end of this process, we create children, and we re repeat this process until n number of uh, ch child, and here I actually tested in uh, 100 children. So the output of this uh, block is uh, a population of children. After that, uh, we apply our the previous algorithm, algorithm one, for each children, 
to identify different kinds of diseases that associated with, I mean the Mendelian disease, complex disease, uh, drug response, and diagenic diseases, and the pathogenic variants. And after that, we performed the summary statistics and collected our results in one uh, file containing all the associated information for later use to visualize. So uh, how we test that our uh, method for uh, linkage disequilibriums or recombination rate is really work. For that, uh, we cannot test it with, the one, uh, with, the forward, with this kind of forward simulations with one step. Then we need to perform another uh, evaluations uh, procedure in which we create a population of a population and then we measure the linkage disequilibriums that are generated from there and compare it with the linkage disequilibriums that appear in real human population and see if we are able to approximate the real linkage disequilibriums appeared in the real human population then we are success. How we did that? Uh, I think the second one is more clear. First, we have generated 100 random populations collected from a 1,000 genome project. After that, we're taking randomly two and generate a next uh, generation of uh, next generation of children randomly. So each two files <coughs> for children. And these will generate the second generations. And we complete this process until a certain number of, uh, certain number of generation. Uh, I was planned to create 100. But unfortunately, this, this process is taking time and uh, huge resource. Uh, so the good news that I was uh, able to um, get uh, good results after we, we reached to the sixth generation. How we did that? Within each generation, sorry. Uh, after each generation, we measure the linkage disequilibrium. We use one of the well-known uh, well tool for that, VCF tool. And uh, we have measured all the real uh, human genomes linkage equilibrium value, and for each generation, also a list of a list of uh, recombinations uh, map for uh, for them. Uh, after that, we compute we compute the correlation between them. We, uh, we compute the correlations between them, and then find uh, and then find if we are able to get a similar a similar result. And as you can see here that our uh, the personal correlations is being increased until we emerge to almost the same by the six uh, by the generation six and seven emerges to the real uh, human genome uh, linkage equilibrium value and as you can see because it is a stochastic process i think it is uh, it is okay to be fluctuated uh, in this in this kind in this case for the, for the second generation Okay, so we implement uh, our tool in, the, in a web interface with using uh, Apache, Apache Web Server. And uh, the communications between the client and server are, uh, are happens uh, using uh, JavaScript and uh, PHP code. And for genome and uh, chromosome visualization are, are actually usually uh, goes through uh, using the, of the edogram, which is, a, which, is a, which is the representations that uh, represents the chromosomes and relative positions, and they are characteristic banding pattern. And for that, we use the ideogram JavaScript libraries, uh, and we overlay the visual representation for each chromosome with the information that we already have in our uh, collected information that's related to the individual. So we have our uh, final output for post scenarios. After that, we create a consolidated and formatted uh, and well-structured file that can be represented in JSON, form JSON file format. Uh, after that, we use this, uh, this file to represent uh, the information in, as a chromosomal view using Adogram JavaScript library or as a table, interactive table using a D3 table. And here's just a quick uh, review of the, of the website. The user will upload the file and analyze the result. And here is one, of, uh, this, one example of uh, this analysis. So we have, we showed that each variant uh, in a particular position within the chromosome. And we, sh we have different categories for different, for, for different uh, effects, for different kinds of the diseases. And also the user can uh, follow the link can, uh, by selecting a single variant and follow the links to get more additional information and uh, uh, more detailed information about 
this, this type of variance. And for parameter testing, it's, it's almost the same, but the difference here are the user is also able to filter based on the likelihood uh, value. And here's just the same information, but represented in the table format. Here's just uh, a quick uh, demo of, uh, how, uh, of the website. So the user just upload the file. And here I just use very simple example with 10, 10 or 100 variants. And after that, since the, this process taking takes some time, I just provide the link so that the user can back again after 10 minutes or five minutes to show to to see the result. For here, it's, it's finished quickly, so I'm able to see the result directly. It was only one uh, one variance. So after that, the user can uh, see all the detailed information regarding to this. Here, just one variance in table format. Here's just the example that for one who wants interested to know what's the, right, what's the result will be. Uh, this is the, the example that I just show you. So it's filter based on kind of uh, different kind of variants. And uh, they are also able to uh, get more information by following the links associated with, uh, with this variants. So uh, this web interface is quite interesting and able to use by any people, but however, in case for hospital or for, uh, for the people who are care about the sensitivity of their data, we used to think to, we used to, uh, we think to use uh, Docker uh, container, which is designed to make it easier to create and deploy your applications easily. So we uh, container, containerization uh, our tool and uh, by providing all the, our detailed scripts, uh, so that's, that's so that the, the hospital can download our, our, our data, it's available in our GitHub account, and then can run our tool and analyze uh, their patients without the need for sending their data to us. So uh, before I conclude, I just want to share with you uh, some interesting and quite promising uh, case study in the scope of uh, genome sequence analysis, particularly in finding the causative variant in clinical cases. We have been received 106 samples belong, belong to one, nine, 19 families, Saudi families with, con, with consanguinity marriage provided by the National Guard Hospital in Riyadh. And I should emphasize that this project is a teamwork project involving uh, my advisor, Professor Robert, and Professor Takashi Gajaburi from CBRC, and also Dr. Ahmed Al Faris from National Guard. So, in this family, we often observe a congenital marriage with at least one affected child and the phenotypes for unknown or known uh, genetic disorder. And those samples are actually sequenced at CAUS core labs and applying a whole genome sequence with 30x uh, coverage. Our approach for finding the causative variant for this real sample is as follows. We have been used uh, GATK, which is the Genome Analysis Toolkit, for uh, analyzing, for getting the variant. So actually, actually this tool is focusing in, in, vari in, finding the, uh, in, in discovering the variant, sorry. So this pipeline show how we can go from raw sequence data all the way until getting our PCF5. There are much detail here, but the bottom line is that we have three important phases. First, we perform kind of pre-processing and uh, pre-processing and cleanup of the data and to produce spam file. Uh, after that, we, we uh, discover, our, discover the variant and distinguish between the real variant one and the uh, noise. And finally, the third panel is just uh, kind of refine, refine, and filter the variant and decide uh, whether uh, we keep this uh, variant or not. Then our uh, processing is to start as follow. We have a list of variants. We use ANOVA database to annotate and define the coding and non-coding regions and assign math value. And for assigning math value, uh, we have used uh, three, three populations, uh, three population, based, three database story with all population, GNOMAD and EXAC and 1000 Genome Project. And uh, we filter out all the math value that's more than 1% since we are caring about only the rare variants. After that, the second, the second step, we utilize the pedigree information that already provided by the hospital and uh, we filter out all the variants that are appear on the unaffected children 
And actually, this step is quite challenging uh, because uh, each uh, family are, are as it is self, uh, completely different case, case, case study. So we need to uh, tune our filtering in terms of possible, of different possible mode of inheritance scenario. Uh, for example, in one family, they are both uh, mother and father, they are not affected, but their, ch their children have uh, same or different diseases. So in this case, we consider that the variant will be recessive in both uh, parents. Other cases that one of the parents are affected, but their children, uh, one of the parents are affected and their children also affected, but not the same diseases. So we need to consider the recessive or the dominant case. Uh, after that, we use the BVB predictions, which is developed by one of our teams, uh, Iman. Uh, but it's perform high performing prioritization tool to prioritize all the variants. Actually, here is, in this step, we have more than 1 million variants. So after using, after a filtering and use uh, prioritize the variant that must, that more likely to cause the disease, we got uh, 2,000 or 1,000 or even 100, 200. It's depends in the, it depends in our analysis of the B degree. And then we uh, inter we from performs inter our clinician interprets the potential uh, variants uh, resulted from VBB uh, based on the literature and based on their her knowledge and uh, all the detailed information. And actually, here we can use our we can use our tool PSM, uh, but uh, for only the variants that already mentions in the, one of the database. And finally, we get a list of uh, variants, but due to the ethical issue, I cannot share the, the variant or analysis uh, with you. But uh, the main purpose for me to introduce this kind of project, just in case anyone interested or have uh, more information or suggestions that can help us to better analyze, analyze especially for the pedigree information, uh, so we can get more results. And uh, this project is uh, still undergoing. We didn't finish it, uh, all, the, all, the, all the things yet. So, uh, since our, our tool is quite interesting and quite perfect, but there is nothing perfect in this life, we still have some limitation. I um, already introduced uh, some limitations in the, in the previous case study, that our tool can be used only for the already known variants in one of the databases. So, uh, the annotations method that we use only uh, con con concentrated on the well-known uh, pathogenic mutation, and also there is some diseases are uh, six linked, linked. I mean, they are linked to X chromosomes or Y chromosome. We are not considered this. And actually there are some diseases need more clinical investigation uh, since the genome sequencing uh, actually is more integrative. It's required doctor, it's required experimental biologist in order to analyze these variants in lab and decide whether or not this variant will cause the disease. But as a future work, we have, we have been trying to, number, uh, to increase the number of databases that can be used for, uh, for annotation. Uh, and also by applying the tool in real family and uh, adjusting uh, the result accordingly uh, to improve the result and be able to predict more variants. And uh, one more thing that our, about our simulation algorithm. Our simulation algorithm actually is more generic than what we are using now and what we are emphasizing in our title for parameter testing, it can be used to simulate a population uh, of genetic epidemiology to study how the disease manifests themselves or also can be uh, used for uh, looking to uh, uh, a certain evolu evolutions of uh, treats or uh, diseases. So as a conclusion, uh, PSM is just uh, a tool that provides explanation uh, for possible health problems associated with individual and also with the individual that, uh, that arising from uh, two, uh, two individual. And uh, it can be used, it's suited, suited to be used by genetic uh, clinician and especially for the person that have, uh, have a high risk of, con of consanguinity, consanguinity marriage. So, uh, I would like to say special thanks to my uh, advisor for the invaluable uh, comments and uh, insightful uh, review for my work and uh, providing me this opportunity to present here. So thank you so much, Professor Robert. And also uh, I would like to express uh, my gratitude and thanks to my team for their support. 
And last but not least, my university, Taip University, for providing me a full scholarship to complete my graduate study here at Kaust. And of course, thank you all for being here, to, for being here today and being attention to me. Thank you so much and welcome to your questions. Could you please repeat your question? Uh, have you thought about commercializing this idea? Commercializing? Yes. <laughs> Actually, yes, we are thinking about that, but we still uh, need just to overcome some of the limitation, and uh, we will see with our uh, innovation center here at Coast if we can commercialize this. Yeah, actually, we rely on the well-known causative variant of the database. So for more uh, information regarding is, is this is really will happen, unfortunately not, but they can take this result and go to the clinician just to make sure if one, if, if this is, if one of these diseases will really affect their uh, health or not. So yeah, it's just, it's just a tool that can be helpful for the clinician more than the individual itself. So the clinicians can uh, based on their knowledge and uh, literature survey they're doing, they can make sure if this is related to the disease or not. So, uh, because in your middle, uh, in one of your articles, you were showing that you were using some off the shelf tools or uh, use some analysis, right? So, once they provide you results like based on their analysis, to, uh, how you can trust them, like uh, starting from the data to the end result? You mean uh, for finding the recombination? For the recombination, as I said, we rely on the testing for the real uh, recombination map in the human, and we have all these values related to the real population. And our evaluations was uh, create a random population. They are at the beginning. They are non. Uh, they are, there is no linkage equilibrium them found in them. After that, we move forward generation by generation, and uh, the linkage equilibrium should appear after a certain amount of uh, population. So after we move a couple of generation ahead and we measure our uh, linkage equilibrium, we find there is a correlation between our methods and the real, uh, real one. That means that our simulations, it's hopefully 90% work well. Thank you for the questions. Then the data is usually that short read sequencing, and that doesn't allow you to really get happen times. So your simulations and the things are very theoretical in some sense at this moment. Uh, can, can you can you comment on that? Because I, I, I don't. What do you mean by theoretical? Uh, because you, you wouldn't be able to get for your patient at this point unless you would use like bio or really long sequencing. Um, they're, they're so if you would then make the recommendations. Yeah, we have a reference during during doing our simulation. We have a reference genome as a, as a parameter to come to generate to generate the children. We have a reference genome with the help of the, our recombination map. So, is this is answer your question? The reference is, is just wrong. I mean, it doesn't tell you what combination of amino acid. Uh, so why are you specifically doing the recombination? I doing recombinations because this uh, the tool that we are uh, the tool that uh, generates this simulation the, uh, do it randomly. They are not account for comorbidities of the diseases that must must be inherited together to the new uh, simulation children. So that's why I updated this uh, this version in order to accommodate for this uh, so type. Yes, exactly. exactly. It's only at that point that doing the simulation <coughs> extra 
with extra value to to the resulted uh, children. You mean? Yes. But okay. Okay, I should uh, check that again with you. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> In the female, I mean the recombination process happen yeah. not exactly in, uh, in in the in X or Y chromosome. I mean the recombination in general. And 50 percent all the times are higher than uh, the male. This is the fact. I don't know what's behind it, but it is a fact. You mean for the evaluation? Or? Uh, you mean this? Uh, actually, from the current generation, because we don't have the sequence for the grandparents or above, so we or, uh, we most likely have the sequence of parents and their affected children. So we starting from uh, the current uh, generation. And aunts. And what? You have sometimes cousins and aunts. Ah, yeah, yes. Sometimes we have cousins and aunts that's, that's uh, in the same family, so we exclude some of the sharing variants for the non affected cousin or non affected uh, children. Uh, it's more like curiosity. Yeah. Do you show up as, let's say, hey, you cannot get by your otherwise you will be very special? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Are there regulations now saying, oh, no? You, you mean for the... Yeah, after the test. After, after the test, it's personal choice. Okay. So we have, we provide to you all the information that's as far as our knowledge. So then it is your choice. If you, if you really care about your children, then you should not get married. <laughs> oh, other, the, otherwise, the children will be suffering. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, maybe, actually, it's harder than that because you give probabilities. For certain, common, for certain severe diseases. And the question is at which probability, because there's a certain probability that any parents are going to yes. have diseased children. So the question is at which probability, and this is very hard to do, and so at which probability do you decide you're not going to get married? Is it going to be 50% or 30%? Only if it's more than 90%? Is 5 For me, enough? it should be more than uh, 90. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, no. Sorry, I'm clear about my children <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> but it's a very complicated. I mean, it's a very complicated question, right? Yes. So it depends on the person and then the family. <laughs> Actually, the, uh, this tool uh, intended to be used by the genetic counselor more than the individual because they know more about all these kind of variants. So yes, they are can review or view all the results that we provide here, and then based on that, explain to the couples all the potential uh, risk problem that may be arise. Any other questions? Yes. Just thank you for this presentation. Just one question: What makes Yeah, actually for the existing tour, uh, existing tour, they are not uh, accommodate for the, uh, the non-uniform distributions of the recombinations in creating the simulating, simulating children and analyze all the diseases. And uh, also for, uh, the, for preventive testing, also, there, is no, there is no tool really care about all these different kinds of diseases related to the children. All the current preliminary testing uh, happen based on, I think, four to five um, severe diseases. So here we, comp we account for more different uh, variants associated with diseases and also the drug response. Why are you using simulated data? Why are you not using like real data?
Uh, I don't know the, I, I mean, I expect the new children of a uh, couple of marriage, uh, of uh, two couples that are intended to get married. So, so I don't have their data, their data. And for the case study, actually, this is different than my project. This case study, uh, my, my project can be used only in the final stages for analyzing different uh, diseases that might associated with the, with the children. Yes. How many countries have these premarital tests as mandatory? Again? How many others? You said that it is a mandatory test. Mandatory test? <laughs> it's it's mandatory. I, 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 for me, I, I know that it's mandatory test here, uh, test here in Saudi Arabia. I'm not sure about it because we really more than 80% of genetic diseases in children are arising from consanguinity marriage, which is really, really a huge uh, problem here in Saudi Arabia. So interestingly, I think you can only have premarital testing for this purpose in some countries with certain, uh, certain um, um, social issues surrounding marriage and having children. So if you do mm. this in many parts of Europe or say the US, uh, having children is no longer associated with being married. So there is not a particular purpose. Well, it's true. but uh, so. Premarital testing is not something that uh, that would make much, se much sense there. So this works in regions and in societies where there's still a strong correlation between getting married and actually having children. I mean, this is a precondition. So I know that UAE has a similar test mandatory. Mm. Um, I think Cyprus does. Um, yes, so Cyprus, at least the Turkish Cyprus does. So I think there are a number of countries which have this. But I think, for well, how many diseases are, is there a test in Saudi Arabia? I think four to five, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So it's a four to five. anemia, anemia and and, uh, and thalassemia, yes. If I may comment, even irrespective of consanguous marriages, also in Europe, we will have certain conditions like mental disability, if I don't that it has to prevail, I think, of uh, one in 25 is a carrier, by accident of you both carriers that you have one in four chance of having a child with a So even in Europe, in respect of the consanguine marriages, generally it can be useful to have this kind of testing. Okay. I didn't take it into consideration. There is nothing limit. I realized that at the end of my project, and so it's not that much hard, of course. I can uh, improve it in the next version of ESM, maybe. But there is no specific reason. Just I didn't take it into consideration. Thank you so much. Any other questions? OK, so if there are no further questions, uh, then let's thank our speaker again.